Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about uh, dependencies. Now, based on my experience working with clients, especially on Jira Cloud, there is one uh, issue with Jira. I mean, not really an issue to be honest, but it is more about, uh, I mean, it is an issue to be honest, but uh, there, there are ways to deal with it. And uh, I thought I'll probably share my experience and give you some ideas and uh, help you, of course. So usually when people are using a tool like Jira and uh, they maybe are coming from another tool or maybe they are using a tool, some kind of a tool for the very first time. Usually when people are, are trying to use a tool like Jira, they are trying to, of course, solve a problem. They want to deliver. They want to make sure that they are able to track their work. And uh, in Jira, of course, we have the option to create uh, a roadmap now or at least on Jira Cloud. On Jira Data Center, we have, of course, uh, advanced roadmaps. But anyways, when you have, when you're using a inbuilt project roadmap or whether you're using advanced roadmaps, the problem is, uh, and it depends on your perspective, but uh, you can create, uh, and I will talk about each and everything, you can actually create dependencies number one, but in a way it is not really a dependency. For example, if uh, you're talking about this issue, which is the backend API, right? Now this backend API has to be delivered first. And I'm, I'm, I'm using the words uh, carefully here. So when you're trying to do something like in your roadmap, you want certain activities to be done first. So it is like a, like a dependency and uh, it is basically a dependency that is basically uh, something that you need for sure and otherwise you are blocked. So if your backend is not ready, then you can't really, or if, if your if your infrastructure infrastructure is not ready, then you can't really proceed further. So some things are definitely, uh, although these are dependencies, but uh, you need those things to be delivered first. And once you have your dependency, of course, you can uh, uh, link it. So in Jira, there is no such thing called as a dependency. If you are new to Jira, it is all about uh, linking the issues together. Now, good thing is that uh, that you when you link issues, when you link one issue to, an, to another issue, you can actually specify the type of link. And these links have a direction, right? So when you say that this backend API, it is blocking something else, it is basically blocking uh, the launch of Android app and launch of iOS app, you can say here that okay, uh, when you create a new dependency, uh, you can actually say that this particular uh, this particular in uh, this this particular epic is uh, blocked by or it is uh, blocking basically blocks something else so you can actually select here something else and uh, you can actually then uh, uh, work on uh, your plan on your roadmaps because on the roadmap it looks really good right because you have this dependency and then uh, you can see here visually so number one it is not really a true dependency. It is just a link for your information, but you have to manage it. You have to PM it. You have to make sure that you are able to use this information for doing something. Now, if you're using it, let us say advanced roadmaps, you will plan the work, right? On a, on a, on a timeline, you can move it, move things around. Now, the thing is that in Jira, nothing will happen if you don't deliver this backend API by, by a particular date. I mean, Jira on its own won't really do anything. So, uh, I mean, you can still uh, go to your launch API and start the work. I mean, sometimes you can't really actually start the work, but there's no control here to stop you. For example, if I go to launch Android app, there is no control here that will stop me to resolve this. So although it, it is dependent on something else, but you can, uh, Jira won't really stop you. So this is like, this has been the case uh, since the beginning. These links are just links. Now, basically the problem, that, again, let us not worry too much about, uh, so this is, a, this is the concern or, you know, thing that you can't really easily do out of the box in Jira, like dependencies and uh, making sure that the plan is not just a visual plan, but you're also able to use the plan to do something. Basically, uh, ideally, you should only start this launch Android app work when you get something delivered, uh, basically your backend API is delivered. Now, of course, 
this is still good because you have links in, and you can PM it because when even someone is uh, usually when you're talking about uh, for me it's not really a major concern because I don't if I if I'm project managing something uh, of course the tool is there to help me to solve 80 percent of my pro of my problems but for remaining 20 percent you need human beings and uh, Jira is quite flexible in that regard you can do a lot of things to let to to basically remind yourself or your team that you need to deliver this backend API by this date. And obviously, when you're trying to follow Agile, which is rare, like not, not a, I mean, it is it is almost impossible to follow Agile by book because things uh, are always, you know, changing. And uh, Agile is not ju just about creating sp sprints in Jira or any other tool. It's, all, it's of course, all about, you know, the process and uh, people, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, so the, so the thing is that you have to PM it. If you can't PM it, then... Uh, of course, learn how to, I mean, don't really expect the tool to do everything. The thing, the, the other thing that I want to talk about is uh, what else you can do or what extra you can do or maybe a, a, an alternate approach to basically doing this thing in some order. So basically, I'm talking about a process, like there has to be a life cycle and also uh, there has to be, let us say, uh, some kind of uh, a plan and uh, order is key here. So what you can do, uh, let us say you're working on uh, a big piece of work and uh, that big piece of work is dependent or is basically blocking something else. I should say blocking something something else. Let us say you have a backend API and you can't really start the work on launch API and, unless you get the backend API. So in this example, you actually need a roadmap view like this. Uh, but what you can do is uh, you can also use automation rules to basically create some activities on some transitions. So let us say you have a workflow for an epic. Now you can actually do something like uh, in your automation rules where you will create the next set of activities when uh, your uh, epic moves from one status to, to another, status, st uh, another status. So maybe uh, again, it's it, it's probably not ideal in all the use cases, but imagine that you have a workflow for deployment or whatever. So basically, you are actually using your workflow as well for your planning. And uh, it, it may not always work because this can only work when you have like a well-defined process and you're doing the same thing over and over again. For example, if you're launching... Uh, I mean, in this example, we're trying to launch a mobile app, right? But imagine that you're trying to launch uh, or basically in your organization... Uh, let me give you one example. I worked with one with, with an organization in the past where actually they were using uh, Portfolio, Advanced Roadmaps, uh, what's actually known as Portfolio. I think it was uh, acquired by Atlassian in 2015, if I remember correctly. So they were actually using Portfolio to deliver or to track or plan their uh, marketing uh, campaigns. And for each and every marketing campaign, they were basically doing something all the times. For example, they were always creating some landing pages, they were creating some images, and they were also publishing it on their uh, portal. Basically, it, it was basically for a travel agency. And uh, they had like a very well-defined process because they had to do all those things in, all those things, of course, all the time, and also in some order. So what you can do, of course, you can use Portfolio. I mean, Portfolio was great because you can put I mean, not the current version, but the old version of Portfolio was basically a uh, live, live uh, plan. And you had the option to manage your uh, scheduling factors and uh, vacations, which I really miss, to be honest. The new version, Advanced Roadmaps, although it is easy to use, but at the same time, it is not feature rich. Anyways, so what you can do is that you can create a workflow for your uh, recurring activities, plans, for your well-defined process and you can actually trigger the next set of uh, task stories to get cr created in Jira and maybe assigned to someone using automation rules. So maybe the moment you move from one toll gate to, uh, to another toll gate or uh, one milestone to another milestone, you trigger the next set of activities so that your next set of activities can't really be started because they don't really exist yet. So you will only trigger those activities uh, for other teams to work on. For example, when your backend API is, is, is uh, let us say, ready, you create the next set of activities for the individual teams, maybe in their own project. So you can do that very easily with the help of uh, automation rules. And you can track basically these things maybe under one epic so that everything is grouped together. So that can work. 
uh, basically if you look at this backend activity back backend api activity you have of course some items here right you can obviously create these items manually but to to solve that problem of uh, dependencies you are actually creating those uh, dependent tasks uh, at the right time and you're you can also assigning assign it to someone and by the way on my channel i have plenty of videos on uh, automation rules like how to create tasks and also link them for example in this case everything will be linked to one common epic here in this particular project but those projects could be in different projects i mean those stories or tasks could be in different projects so this is something that i believe you can look at of course uh, i'm not really saying that this is like creating tasks only when they're needed or when the right time comes it can only work when you have a very well defined uh, process and you're doing something all the time so maybe you know do you do some homework maybe uh, talk to some atlassian consultant dependencies in jira it, it has always been uh, very soft I, again there are no dependencies but there there are links but these links are just for you to use jira won't really stop you or do anything extra for you to not uh, start your dependent items or if 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 you missed your deadline then nothing will happen right so you need basically need a project manager to manage and use this information and of course report on it of course you can do a lot of wonderful things on top of this information you can create your subscriptions you can create your dashboards because you have when you have a plan you have a due date so you can do that and uh, uh this of course uh will uh give you some idea about uh, when you have to start the work and uh, when you are of course changing these dates here uh by by shifting things it won't really change the dates for your dependent items automatically i mean it depends if you're using like sprints and everything then it might work but uh, not always so roadmaps although i think it's great but it is still not there yet it is not really mature enough to be used like as a proper gant chartish kind of uh, a tool i mean there are some other uh, plugins like big picture you can take a look at it but big picture although it has a lot of features it is very difficult to use i mean this is based on my experience and this is again a problem because uh if it is if something is too complicated i think there big picture I, i think there is a learning curve and uh, i know how to use it because i am i'm fam- i'm not only familiar with jira but i am also familiar with big picture but I, I, I I want my clients to be able to use it. They they should be able to be you use the tool. It could be a advanced roadmap or it could be big picture or whatever to basically make a plan and maintain it and manage it. And that actually involves like proper training slash coaching and workshops. It is not really simple. <laughs> uh, I mean, training someone on how to use a big picture or even advanced roadmaps. To be honest, again based on my experience, advanced roadmaps. in theory on paper feature wise it is good but it is not really super useful because uh, uh i mean i'll tell you why advanced roadmap is great for reporting majority of people that i know who use advanced roadmaps they just look at the information and they report on it that is it because you can have like everything together and it will show you everything in just one view which you can of course manipulate but i know very less people unfortunately who are or maybe it is just my experience my experience who are actually using advanced roadmaps for uh, planning uh, who are actually using advanced roadmaps for uh, scenarios because you can do that and and they are also using if again you can also do release some kind of release management or release planning or sprints uh, advanced roadmap is like a pure agile road mapping tool and it will only work when uh, when 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 uh, you feed the right information in like the most pure agile fashion because uh, if you're following story points if you feed everything to to advanced roadmaps then it can work and that is not really the case to be honest in reality uh, anyways that is it for today's video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new thank you very much bye bye